lecture series on personal financial planning. In my previous lecture, I have talked about investment planning. And the investment planning, I talked about what is investment, what are the features of investment, what are the different types of investment, financial investment, real investment, real asset, financial assets like that. Now I will start with objectives of investment. Any investor, when you invest, what are can be the different objectives? And let me tell you that different individuals may be having different objectives, may be having different objective of investment depending on the financial goal of that individual, depending on the age, depending on the risk profile, depending on the income level, depending on the even nature of the investor. Different investors may be having different objectives, but broadly for making any investment, these are the different type of objectives which an investor, with which the investors invest in an in asset. It may be financial asset, it may be a real asset. I mean, when you invest, first thing which comes in your mind is that your capital must be preserved. This is the objective, whether you will achieve it or not. It is a separate thing because every investment is subject to some amount of risk involved. The risk, the degree of risk may vary. We say, say post office deposits are having the government treasury bonds. They have the minimum of risk or, or you may say call it risk free. But when you invest in equity, right, when you invest in other, some of other classes, asset classes, they are quite risky, right. So, your capital may I have seen over a period of time the price of the shares have increased 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, 50 times over a period of time, say within a span of say 30, 40 years even. But sometime I have seen that the, the capital has reduced to zero. You have invested in a company where, where the company, I mean over a period of time become the sick company and finally it is being closed. So, your, the value of your shares maybe come to zero or I mean 10 percent or 5 percent of the price at which you have invested. So, one of the objective of making the investment is especially if you are an investor who is, who, who is not interested in taking much of the risk that you want that your capital must be preserved. That is the reason a very large number of people in India making, make investments in the bank fixed deposit because they know it that it will give you a lesser return but the capital is preserved. It will give you a, a very nominal rate of return on your investment, but your capital is protected. When you invest in government bonds, you know it that the, the capital appreciation is not much. You will get only a fixed amount of interest every year, but your capital is preserved. That is very purpose. If you are not interested in taking risk, you prefer to, the objective is to preserve capital. Stability of return. Again, depending on individual to individual. Suppose I am a pensioner. I make, I get a sum of rupees, 1 crore rupees at the time of my retirement. What I want is that I will have to spend on my household expenditure. Every month I have some household expenditures. Say I have a household expenditure of 75,000 rupees per month. So, I will make investment in an in, 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 in asset class which gives me stable return. Suppose I invest in bonds. I may be investing in government bonds. I may be investing company deposits. I may be making my investments in senior citizen saving schemes, which will give me 8 percent fixed interest, right? Or it, I will be investing in bank fixed deposits, which will give me 6, 7 percent rate of interest. By rate, my, but my returns are stable. That is, it will not fluctuate. Sometime there is a very high return, sometime very low return or no return at all. So, the purpose can be, the objective can be the stability of returns. That wherever I am making my investment, wherever I am uh, deploying my funds, that gives me a regular flow of income in form of stable returns. Right? I have given you an example. So, these investment bank FDs, post office deposits, government bonds, companies bonds, they give you stable returns capital appreciation. The objective can be, I, I, I am a person who is having a good flow of income. I am having a reasonably good salary supposing and I want that 
a mere interest of 5, 6 percent, 7 percent will not, I am not happy, I am not satisfied with that. Uh, what I want is when I invest, the capital should appreciate that if I invest say 1 lakh rupees in the equity market, then after 4 years, after 5 years, this 1 lakh should become 2 lakh, right. So, with this objective, I am making investment. The objective can be capital appreciation. Capital appreciation means whatever the amount of capital which you have invested in an asset class, the value of that asset increases, that is capital appreciation, which normally we call it capital gain, right. So, if you invest in a, in a real estate, if you invest 1 crore rupees in real estate, your, in, your purpose is that after 5 years, after 10 years, it will become say 3 crore rupees. How much it takes place, it is a subject matter, right, because it depends on the risk, it, it depends on various factors. But the objective is that whatever capital I have invested, the amount which I am deploying, it is called capital. So, this capital should, the, val, the price of this capital or the, the, this capital should appreciate. So, appreciation is one of the objective of making investment. Financial independence. Financial independence means that I want that I should make like I was in the, in his, in the first point itself when I was talking of preservation of capital, I was talking about the you want that your capital should be protected. Once you are retired, then at that time you do not have a regular flow of income, you do not have a pension, right. So, you want that you do not want to be dependent on your children. What you want is that I should deploy my funds in an asset class which will give me a regular flow of income so that I am not financially dependent on others. That is called financial independence. That is I must get that income where I am not dependent on my children, on my parents. Suppose you are, you are a college student, right. So, you are, you are doing some part time job. This part time job which you are making, you are getting income out of it, right. So, this income which you are getting out of that part time job, you invest in some asset class which gives you a regular flow of income, so that you become financially independent. For your pocket money, for your other expenses, you do not have to depend on your parents. So, that is called your financial independence. Financial security. Financial security means when you have a good amount of wealth, you are financially secured. Life is very uncertain. Any time, any expense, any large sum of expense, you may have to incur anything. Suppose any ailment takes place. On this ailment, you have to spend a heavy amount on a hospital bill or something like that, on medical bill, right, or your medicines. So, when you when you accumulate wealth, you make investment out of your past savings, you have made investment, this investment have grown over a period of time and this gives you financial security, that is you are not only independent, financially independent for your routine expenses, but also if a large sum of money you have to incur. For, for any of your requirement, any of your need, you are financially secured. Tax benefit. Friends, especially people in the higher tax bracket, higher tax income or higher income bracket, they always look upon what is the tax implication of their investments. There are certain investments where there are tax benefits, that is they are not subject to tax. The income which you generate out of this is not subject to taxation. Like say for example, at this moment if I give example of public provident fund PPF, right. Every year an individual can deposit 1.5 lakh rupees in the PPF of an individual. You can deposit up to 1.5 lakh rupees. I am talking of the present laws in India that 1.5 lakh rupees you can deposit in the public provident fund. And the rate of interest is at present, the present rate of interest is 7.1 percent. So, while you making the investment under section 80 C, it is directed from your income while making the, while calculating your taxable income. Secondly, when you will get interest on your investment, the interest income which you will get after every year, again it is not taxable. Finally, the time period of the public provident PPF is 15 years. After 15 years, when you will withdraw it, even at that time, the, the interest income which you have generated over a period of time and the and your principal amount, the amount which you will get accumulated amount which you will get after 15 years, it is not subject to taxes, right. 
So, income means in form of interest and the principal money which will get after 15 years, it is, a taxable, it is not taxable. So, whenever we make investment, we see to it that will this investment give me some tax benefit and what is my post tax return on it. Supposing if I am making a investment in bank fixed deposit, if you make a bank fixed deposit of less than 5 years, it is the interest income which you get is taxable. On the other hand, if you invest in say equity market, if I am in 30 percent tax bracket, the interest income which I will be getting on bank FD, right, it is will subject to 30 percent tax because I am in 30 percent tax bracket. But the equity investment which I have made, the capital appreciation that will take place and when I will dispose it of the capital gain which I will making, if I sell it before one year, it is subject to short term capital gain that is 15 percent, my tax bracket is 30 percent, my income is in 30 percent. But if I make investment in the equity market and sell it before less than a year that the I am subject to 15 percent taxation and if I sell it after an year, right, the tax rate is only 10 percent that is called long term capital gain. So, I, I whenever I invest in a, in a bank FD or in an equity market, equity is subject to fluctuation also that is also their risk is high, but you have to see what will be the post tax return, right. So, there can be different objectives depending on individual to individual, but broadly these are the different objectives while making the investment means you want that your capital should be preserved, right, your return should be stable, your capital appreciation should take place, you are not dependent on others, financial independence and financial security and also that what will be the tax benefits of investment, right. Many a time we deposit P in PPF because keeping in mind that this investment will give you not only a steady flow of income, but also there will be a tax benefit. So, after talking of the objective of investment, now let me talk of what are the factors affecting investment. That is, what, what consideration you have to keep in mind while making the investment. Means, I mean, whenever you think of investment, what things you should see that what are the factors which is which will impact your decision making on investment. The first is return. Every time when we make investments, the first thing that comes in our mind is what income I will get out of it. I have talked earlier also in the previous lecture also that return may be in two forms, either in form of regular flow of income or in form of capital appreciation. When I was talking of objective, even at that time I said the objective can be the capital appreciation, the objective can be a flow of income. So, you see that what return and every individual want to get maximum return, but when I talk of maximum return, it is associated with many things is associated with risk, it is associated with time horizon, right. There are many things associated with it, but every individual see to it that what the return the investor will get out of that investment. If I am making some investments, I will, whether I will get 5 percent return, 7 percent interest, 10 percent interest or I will get capital appreciation every last sum of return, what will be the return? So, return is the most vital important factor while making the investment. The other is liquidity. When I talk of liquidity, liquidity means the ease with which you are able to convert an asset into cash that is called liquidity. Normally in the books you will find this is the definition of liquidity, the ease with which the ease and the convenience with which you will able to convert an asset into cash. I will add one more thing with lesser degree of fluctuations means not only converting it to cash, but with lesser degree of fluctuations in the means if I have invested in the capital, if I invested in equity, equity is highly liquid in the sense that stock market in India is open from Monday to Friday and any time between the working hours of the stock market that is from 9.15 to 3.30 at present, you can sell the shares and in the third day itself your money is comes in your bank account. So, it is quite liquid, but the stock market fluctuates a lot, fluctuates a lot, right. Sometimes stock market are very high, 
there is a moon period, sometime there is a dull period, so stock market are falling. At that time, if you want to need cash, so for any emergency, so then if you dispose it at a time when the stock market is falling, you will make you there are chances that you may make even losses, not to talk of capital appreciation, right. So, when I talk of liquidity for making any investment, we sh should see that ease with, ease, ease with which we can convert an asset with a lesser degree of fluctuation uh, into cash that is called liquidity. Like for example, real estate, real estate I mean you can dispose it of, but in real estate there is no tr real transparency in India at least. I mean there is a lot of cost involved in selling it, there is a time involved. If you have some suppose it is you have one house in which you are living and for investment purposes you have purchased some other residential property, some other house and you need money for something. For some of your needs, you want to marry your child or you want to go for the higher education, you want to take your MBA degree from a foreign university and that may require 70, 80 lakh rupees. For that purpose, your parents want to sell that house. But when you want, when you go for the selling your house, the lot of cost is involved, the, the registration cost, the brokerage cost and the lot of cost is involved and there is a time gap, time, time gap between when you sell it and when you get the money. So, comparatively it is less liquid. So, liquidity means the ease with which, ease and convenience with which you are able to convert an asset into cash. Like if you are bank FD, bank FD is normally for a period, for a 3 years, for 1 year, 2 years, right, depending on for how long you have made the bank FD, for a what period you have made the bank FD. But supposing you require money, you can go to the bank and any working day, and you can get your money back, although the bank will put some penalty on it, right. But is sometime some banks even do not charge that penalty, right. So, sometime some banks charge some penalty, very small amount, half percent, one percent interest. Means if your bank FD was of six percent, seven percent, they may give you only five percent or six percent interest, but you can convert it into cash, right. So, the liquidity means the ease with which you can convert cash. The other factors when you make the investment is risk risk is also a very important factor while you make the in, make the investment. There are certain asset classes which are risky assets, which may appreciate quite significantly, which may depreciate also quite significantly. Like say if I take the example of again gold, over a period of time gold has given you good capital appreciation, but it is not necessary that the price of gold will remain always static, right. If supposing if you have purchased the gold at a time when the gold prices are very high and after 6 months you want to dispose of that gold, the price of that gold may have fallen. So, there is an element of risk. I have talked many times in this very lecture also about the equity. Equity price fluctuates too much every day even during the 915 to 330. If you see it's the same stock can fluctuate to the extent of 5 percent, 10 percent, 15 percent, right. So, within a day itself, within within the span of 6 hours of the stock market trading, the price fluctuates. So, there is an element of risk. The price may double, triple in a span of 1 year, 2 year, even less than that. Price may depreciate to the extent of 40 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent. I have seen over a period of time even the good companies, the price of that fluctuate. When, when Corona, the pandemic came to the world, right, Corona virus. At that point of time, world over, the stock market falls substantially 20 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent, right. So, means the asset class, different asset class have different risk. Depending on your own risk profile, how much risk you are ready to take, you should take investment decision because every investment is subject to some risk. That is why you might have observed in your life also that your parents who are, who are aging, Right? They do prefer to make investment in, in bank fixed deposits, on government bonds, where the income is regular, but the element of risk is minimum. So, risk is very important factor which you will must consider, I will say, while making the investment. Capital appreciation. In the first point, I said each one of us make investment for the, for the objective of return. Return, I said in two forms, 
one is regular flow of income in form of interest, in form of rent, in form of dividend. The return may be in form of increase in the value of the asset that is called capital assets. I just remember a year back the gold price was less than a year back, six months back the gold prices in India was around 50,000, 52,000 rupees. Today the gold prices are 60,000 rupees. The person who has invested in gold in six months back or eight months back, right, the, the in the 10 gram of gold was costing, was pricing as 50,000 rupees around I am saying and today it is priced at around 60,000 rupees per 10 gram. So, within a span of 10, 6 months or 8 months you have got appreciation or capital appreciation of 10,000 rupees by making investment of only 50,000 rupees on 10 gram gold. Similarly, you can talk of the any asset class, right. So, objective is that capital appreciation is one of the objective while we make the investments right like if you make deposits in a, in a bank fd post office deposits or say government bonds or for that matter even debentures there is no capital appreciation as such capital appreciation takes place only in the form of accumulated interest which you earn out of it right so you don't the 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 principal amount doesn't increase Right, the principal amount which you have given to the to the company, if you are buying a debenture of a company, after eight years when the debenture will be redeemed, what you will get is if you are getting a regular interest income by the company, so one lakh rupees you have invested, company will pay back one lakh rupees after eight years. During the eight years, the company has already paid you the the interest on that on those debentures. It means there is no capital appreciation as such. But there are other asset classes which I have talked, right? Uh, they give you capital appreciation. Other factor which you must consider while I was talking of the uh, objective of investment, even at that time I said tax aspect of the investment. It all depends on the tax bracket, the in income of your income in which income class you lie. The person who is in lower income group, right? the person's income is not taxable if an individual is earning less than 5 lakh rupees if you are a student like right so you are making a small small earnings by making some small tuitions say for example and you are making some small savings out of it that you are investing but your income is less than 5 lakh rupees you are either your income whatever the income you you are you are generating is tax free supposing out of a small small savings you deposit 1 lakh rupees in bank fd Right. The interest 7000 rupees per month per year you will get it is not taxable because your income is not taxable your income is less than 5 lakh rupees a year. But if a person who is in 30 percent income tax bracket tax bracket whatever the interest that person will get on the bank FD it is taxable right. So, what are the tax aspects that you must consider that while making the investment. I have given you example of PPF like even general provident fund there are many tax free government bonds if you buy tax free bonds at the time of investment up to 1.5 lakh rupees even the interest which you get on those government tax free bonds is not taxable at the time of redemption of those bonds it is again not taxable so people of the higher income tax bracket many times prefer those investment keeping in mind the tax concentration right so while making the investment you must see what is the post tax yield what is the post tax return right a person who is in the lower income bracket or whose income is tax free he will say if he is getting 8 percent interest out of bank fd right uh, he is a happy person because there is no tax on it but if a person is a high tax bracket and getting 8 percent interest but paying 30 percent 30 including surcharge 32 percent so the post yield post tax yield will not 8 percent significantly less than 8 percent because the tax will be charged on that interest and the post interest post tax income will be less. So, we always consider what is the tax implication of the income that will be generated by that investment. Investment horizon again whenever you make investment you see to it what is your investment horizon whether you are making investment for a year for three years you are a student you want that you want to buy a good mobile right expensive mobile say for example. So, your investment horizon is for a year you want 
that out of your small small savings after a year down the line for after one year right you want that you should get say say for example 75,000 rupees or 50,000 rupees and you want to buy your mobile not from your parents income but from your income so your investment horizon is one year so you will park your money where in one year you will make a bank FD for a year so that after one year you can get the money and with interest you can get the from that money you can get buy a mobile but if you like person like who is recently married he want that that person want or the lady wants that after 10 years they want to buy their own house so your investment horizon is 10 years so your investment decision will be such that can give you certainly a little bit higher rate of return but you can invest your park the money for 10 years period so depending on your investment horizon like like for example people do suggest financial planners always suggest that invest in equity equity gives you a higher return as compared to other asset class but within equity if you are investing in the small caps the i have talked earlier in lectures there are large caps there are small caps there are medium caps right if you are in following smaller companies small we call it a small cap uh, equity shares time horizon must be 5 years 10 years because the price of the small cap companies fluctuate more than the price of large cap companies right so what is your investment horizon that will also make your impact on your investment decision say say for example if you are buying a real estate say commercial property if your investment horizon is say one year you should not go for the buying a commercial property because the cost involved in buying and selling is too heavy in real estate right so so if this objective is there for a speculators the speculator may invest in that but if you are an investor real estate should not be invested if your time horizon is 6 months 4 months 1 year means your investment horizon will affect investment horizon will impact your investment and lastly hedge against inflation when i say hedge against inflation what it means is that we always invest in those in asset classes which can beat inflation our endeavor should be again let me give you the example of bank fd because these are the simple things which student can understand easily which you can understand bank fd post office deposits give you sir say 6 7% but if in a country the inflation is 6% then after one year if you get the money 100 rupees you deposit in a bank which will give you 6% interest or 7% interest it becomes 107 rupees but if the real the, the rate of inflation is 7% after one year you will get the money the value of that money will be same it will not increase right so you should make in you should try to make investment in those asset classes which are hedge against it, which can give you a return which is higher than the inflation rate in the country like we call it that gold is a good investment which is a good hedge against inflation it gives you a return which is higher than the rate of inflation normally it has been observed over a period of time so these are the few factors of which affects your investment wherever you make investment you must consider these factors depending on again the various your, your own profile right so these are the factors which affect the investment so thank you very much for today thank you